I know. I know I'd nothing. Like to know that. <laughs> that would be interesting. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to this uh, Budget and Finance Committee meeting for November 19th, 2012. It's 10 minutes after 2 p.m. I'm Paul Krikorian, Chair of the Committee. I'm joined by the Honorable Bill Rosendahl and the Honorable Paul Kretz. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. And uh, we have a quorum. We're ready to begin. Um, we're going to be taking general public comment first. Uh, so if you would like to offer comment on any uh, anything within the committee's jurisdiction, please fill out one of these f cards and bring it forward. The only one that I have right now uh, is for Cheryl Preecy, and I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Preecy to come up now to invite uh, to offer general public comment. Uh, and then we'll be taking item specific comment prior to each item. Okay. Ms. Preecy, welcome. Good. Thank you so much. Um, I, um, I just wanted to. Um, address some um, serious concerns that we have around um, the impending layoffs. Um, our union um, met today with the CAO's office uh, expecting to be able to gather information about the layoffs. In fact, um, there was no information available. Um, still to this time, there are no lists. And now let, let me just say, workers have been noticed that they are to receive layoff notices on December 14th and be out the door on December 31st. So we're less than a month away from workers receiving layoff notices. Um, there are still not lists available uh, as to who's affected. Um, we basically made a demand on the CAO to engage in impact bargaining. Um, the CAO says at this point in time they still have no information, um, particularly from the police department, as to which services and which functions are going to be eliminated uh, as, a, as a result of these dramatic cuts. Um, this is a serious issue. These positions uh, are core functions of the, they perform, these workers perform core functions of the Los Angeles Police Department and they're clearly, the layoffs are going to go forward, there must be a plan in place. There must be a plan in place in terms of noticing and identifying who these laid-off workers are. The union has a right to engage in impact bargaining. None of that is available to us. Um, and so I would ask that that happen. But more importantly, um, I would like to remind you of all of the sacrifice that city workers have made uh, in order to secure funding to keep these positions moving forward. $12 million of savings on health insurance plans. $8 million of the Joint Labor Management Committee moving back into the general fund. Uh, and most significantly, after doing that, um, the city ended the fiscal year, last fiscal year, $10.2 million to the good. Um, we did hear from the CAO that they believe the positions are down to around 109 or 112. Um, it's a significantly lesser amount. Um, but I would encourage this committee to take this matter up in a formal manner as soon as possible. Um, so that we can certainly talk about potential funding issues to keep this critical work moving forward, um, but also um, in terms of service impacts, uh, what is going to be the impact on public safety uh, in the city when uh, records units are decimated uh, and the records of uh, criminal activity, arrests, et cetera, uh, cannot be entered into the, to the relevant system. So it's, it's an important and critical issue, uh, and I really came before you today to try to say that we've really got to focus on this, and I would ask that um, this committee would take this matter up as soon as possible. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other general public comment cards? Is anybody in the process of completing a general public comment card? Seeing none, uh, general public comment uh, for this meeting is closed. Uh, and that will bring us to our closed session items, uh, numbers one, two, three, and four, uh, all of which were, uh, I think all of which were continued from the last meeting. So um, we're going to go ahead and take those items now. Is there anybody here who wishes to be heard on any of those items before we go into closed session? Seeing none, public comment on items one, two, three, and four is now closed. And uh, we will now uh, go ahead and go into closed session. I believe we're going to stay in this room uh, today. Great. Or how do you want to? I try to base it on who's here and how many people are going to be inconvenienced. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and stay here. And if anybody would like a place to sit, that other uh, room should be opened up so that we have a place for everybody to sit and wait. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. you like it? Consent items. Unless either of you have questions or concerns about those. I know. Okay. So ten and eleven will be uh, approved on co uh, on consent, uh, and that brings us to item number five. five. And we have so far one card on item number five. If anybody else would like to comment, please fill out a card. Uh, Mr. McCosker. Uh, five is the fire department uh, report relative to the status of the department's fiscal year 2012-13 budget, including the sworn content staff and overtime account. The department's efforts to switch the fire dispatch center to a 540 work schedule and efforts to seek reimbursements for ambulance transports costs under AB 678. Actually, is the department's representative here? Oh, here he comes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, I uh, wanted to come in and talk about these three fire department budget-related items and give you my perspective on them. First of all, regarding constant staffing, uh, the reason that the fire department is over budget when it comes to staffing is because not enough money was put on in the, in the budget for staffing the fire department. And typically this happens. I see this every time. They don't put enough money in. We run at a deficit. Constant staffing is itching up right now, which is a good thing because, remember, as people retire, we're getting closer to that sweet spot that we've talked about. I think I've talked about it to each of you. It's actually getting cheaper to fill the 932 seats each day, each time a guy retires, but constant staffing does inch up. The fix for this is to properly fund the fire department to fill all 932 seats all year long. But this is a game that really is played, I think, by folks in the next building east of here to put pressure, downward pressure on the fire department. Regarding AB 678, if you remember, when, when I talked about this at length uh, while you were building the budget, I said that, th that I'm told that the money would probably come in November or December. The program would be set up by then, so there shouldn't be any real panic about that, and I hope that there won't be. That money should still come in, and thanks to Barack Obama being reelected and, and um, <clears throat> the affordable health care is going to move forward now, not, not backward, we should have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of more people insured in Los Angeles and collect a lot more in the future. And I hope that'll be built into future budgets to restore the fire department. Finally, and I see I'm running out of time, and there's three things here in only two minutes, on the uh, work schedule for OCD, or for our dispatch center, I should say. That is a disaster waiting to happen. First of all, if the city proceeds the way that EERC is going to vote on Wednesday, they're going to discuss and perhaps vote on if they move unilaterally and change the work schedule to a work schedule that doesn't exist anywhere else in the fire department unilaterally, that is the mandatory subject to bargaining. If they decide to do that and call it impact bargaining only, we're going to have a class action grievance and six or eight months later an arbitrator will hear it and almost certainly agree with us that they had a responsibility to bargain first and award back pay to a whole bunch of people for 16 hours a week for each of those 75 people. So that shouldn't happen and if I just very quickly may say two, Please be careful about, about doing something that's going to be more expensive and less safe. We're certain that it's going to be more expensive to make the change that the chief, I think, has been told to make by the mayor, put them on a 40-hour work week, than keeping them on the schedule they're on now. We're willing to negotiate this. We've offered a, an alternative at the table. We haven't seen any cost analysis of what the chief has had on the table for six or eight months. Please, please work with us before you make a dangerous change and an expensive change like that. Thank you. A lot to squeeze in, Mr. McCosker, but the good news is you get to do it every week on these topics. So we're going to keep coming back with, with regular reports on this. All right. Um, so if we can have the department's representatives uh, present on item number five. Good afternoon. Thanks for your patience. Sorry for the long delay. Good afternoon. Jean Gibson with the fire department. Um, at the last uh, committee meeting, the uh, department had, uh, I'm sorry, the committee had instructed the department to report on how the projected uh, $11 million deficit was derived and to write a roadmap on how we plan to address uh, the shortfall and to achieve a balanced uh, budget at the end of the fiscal year. <clears throat> um, if I may, I'd like to uh, direct you to page two of our report, um, which lists the various <coughs> factors included in the formula for um, calculating uh, the projected uh, budget amount required for constant staffing overtime. Um, based on these factors, the department calculated uh, an increase 
above the 2011-12 fiscal year of $40.3 million. The amount that was approved in the 2012-13 uh, budget, however, was an increase of $32.5 million, which was $7.8 million less than the Department had calculated. Um, the other component that contributed to the $11 million projected deficit um, was assuming a 12-month delay implementing the 540 schedule at the dispatch center uh, would add $3.2 million to that shortfall, bringing the constant staffing over time uh, deficit to $11 million. So the manner in which we are uh, proposing to uh, address the shortfall is transferring anticipated surpluses in the sworn and civilian salary accounts and the overtime variable staffing account, which would reduce the deficit to $5.2 million. The $5.2 million would be offset through the estimated revenues and savings from the sources listed on uh, page two, including reimbursements from water and power. Um, at the last meeting, the committee was concerned uh, about whether or not the reimbursement from water and power is legally permissible. Um, we will be working with the city attorney as well as representatives from water and power to develop a re reimbursement program that's modeled after the reimbursements uh, that have been provided for direct services that support water and power. Uh, activities. Um, the areas that we're considering uh, for reimbursement are those related to hydrants and custodial services for downed power lines and damaged transformers. At the point in time that we uh, develop uh, the specific program, we will report back to the committee uh, and outline how those uh, reimbursements uh, would occur. Um, we've also asked the city attorney to weigh in. Um, what they have indicated is the specific questions that the committee may have would be uh, best presented at the point in time that we present the proposal uh, back to the committee. Well, just to interject briefly on that, what is the state of those discussions? Has, has an actual dialogue begun with representatives of the DWP, or is it still at just the <coughs> stage of getting legal advice from the, uh, from the city attorney? We have received some preliminary information uh, from the uh, department with uh, suggestions that they believe um, the department could provide services to them with respect to the specific activities regarding the hydrants. Um, the responsibility that, that the department would have at this point is to um, have discussions with sworn personnel to better understand the uh, specific um, activities that they engage in uh, at the scene of these incidents and also to determine um, how the time is actually identified through the CAD system. Uh, because one of the issues that the city attorney is particularly concerned about is to ensure that what we do ask for reimbursement um, can be audited and that uh, can be clearly um, justified. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's see, with regard to the 540 schedule, um, the EERC uh, will be considering uh, the matter on Wednesday, as Mr. McOsker had indicated, um, and at that time, the city attorney will be present uh, to talk about the um, the, um, the the bargaining um, methodology that can be employed, um, and the um, cost comparison of the different proposals will also be presented uh, to the uh, EERC. And the last item is AB 678. The program is uh, progressing well. Um, Comments on the cost report were provided by the beta group to the state by November 14th. The goal is to receive the final cost report by late November, early December, so the beta group may complete it uh, and return it uh, to the state for transmission to the federal government uh, uh, by the end of December, no later than the end of December. Okay. Um, so other than the quarter of a million dollars a month that we're accruing in the pendency of the um, change in the uh, implementation of the 540 schedule. Um, have there been any other changes in what the projected deficit uh, is expected to be between now and the end of the fiscal year? Um, no, the, the department is, is uh, holding steady um, <coughs> with respect to the constant staffing over time. I, I believe I had reported um, last week uh, that the um, Average uh, expenditure, you know, is about uh, 3.8, 3.9 million, and so the reporting is based on a per pay uh, period basis, and so based on the last pay period, um, we're holding steady with with that estimate. Okay. Colleagues. No. Uh, just, just. Uh, uh, if you could make a comment or two on your report, I appreciate it. And in an helping, I want to say that I've been very pleased with all of the work going on, especially with the 405 issues and 
issues we worried so much about there. Uh, I obviously have some real issues about the uh, fire station 69, uh, even though the other day uh, it was fully staffed because it was a red flag, but that particular group didn't know where they were going and the news cameras got there before um, our own people got there and I got a lot of nasty pushback from community people. So I don't know how this fits in with this because this is just an update, right? In the note mm -hmm. file. Mm -hmm. Is there any comment you can make about how we pull this together? I like the strategy. Uh, Dave Yamahata, Chief Deputy of uh, Fire Department. Uh, in, in reference to your concerns, uh, as you're well aware of, in this current uh, fiscal or budget year, we reduced our overall resources by 18, com or 18 companies overall, in addition with some other rescues. Uh, our hope is that as the budgetary times improve, that we'll be able to restore some of those resources to improve our overall service to the community. Yeah, and, and as you and I know, I put a motion in. Uh, so did uh, Mr. Garcetti and Mr. Engler put a motion in. And we basically want that public discussion as to how we can assist in that, because frankly, it's unacceptable to us that certain aspects of what we consider critical health and safety issues are, are not necessarily as comfortable as we want to be. Not an attack, it's just that we want to put it out there. We did talk with the chief about it informally about even submitting the motions. Uh, and it, it seems to be a lot of interest, not just with me, but with other ones of my colleagues about the timing and confusion and those kinds of things. Sure, and I agree. And actually, the uh, our chief is working with labor and coming up with a uh, restoration plan, a five-year restoration plan that we'll be bringing to full council. Great. It's a little bit off topic, uh, but just projecting ahead a bit, um, what's your expectation for when that might be coming back to the council, the five-year plan? Uh, I, I think we're hoping to probably uh, bring it back you know, after the holidays, uh, probably sometime beginning in December. Uh, we should right. have some, be able to bring something forward. And, and we'll uh, meet with your staff and to give you an update of where we're at. Very good. Anything further, colleagues? All right, we'll hold this in committee. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate the report. Okay, that takes us to item six. Item six is a CAO report relative to the establishment of a new asset management strategic planning unit in the office of the CAO and related staffing. The personnel and animal welfare committee approve uh, the recommendation on November 6, 2012. As you may recall, um, you know, that we've had the discussion, the council had the discussion on the uh, dissolution of the CRA. Um, one of the uh, critical components of the ex-CRA is certainly the economic development function. Uh, and as part of that economic uh, function is sort of uh, some, some strategy, development of the strategy in the area of our asset management. Um, what this report uh, is focused on is, is a, a piece of that overall econ economic uh, development uh, strategy and looking at our assets. Um, you know, we're certainly, uh, this particular uh, group or this unit, uh, we really need to look at opportunities uh, and, and really sort of put together a framework on how we move forward and what we do with our assets. As far as GSD uh, is concerned, you know, they've had a, a, a sort of a piece of this in, in prior years. Uh, but over the last couple of years, they've really been focusing more on the transactional type activities and, and really haven't been able to really focus on some strategy. Uh, so we have, uh, in working with various uh, departments and CLA and folks, uh, we've put together a proposal uh, for a unit in the CAO's office uh, four positions that would then um, focus on really doing some planning in this area. Uh, for about, roughly about half year costs, or a little over 200,000, uh, we are asking for four positions, uh, asking also for some flexibility um, on sort of uh, looking at the, uh, the, the right mix of folks, um, um, looking at the expertise that we might need. Um, but uh, we're looking to ramp up this unit uh, at the beginning of the year, bringing on four people. 
Um, one thing to be note, this may be sort of a, a sort of a temporary home. Certainly when we continue and have the longer discussion of what we're going to do with uh, the economic development function, this unit may end up transferring at some point, but for now uh, there's a need for us to get this, this, this planning and development function up and running. And so that's what we have, what you have before you today. So back in the day, uh, a number of years ago, this function was housed with the CAO before it went to general services. Do you know the history of that? Why, why that? Is there anybody who can speak to why oh, it was originally Maria. transferred to GSD in 1995? And Maria Cardenas with the CAO's office. I barely remember that, but I. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the asset management space studies leases were housed with the CAO's office and a unit was created in GSD in the asset management uh, unit. Over the years, GSD has really focused on transactional um, endeavors, um, appraisals and space assignments and they really haven't had the expertise or the staffing and especially with EREP and just the loss of positions that, that have occurred throughout the city to focus on strategic planning. And that's something that uh, we would like to transition to the CAO's office and get ready for the new economic development department. Okay, and um, Mr. Sean, you mentioned that this would be um, possibly be a temporary uh, home until some other structure is, is established for it. Um, is there any plan yet for how to continue to fund these positions after the first fiscal year? Most certainly, uh, we're looking at uh, some some asset sales uh, for this year to to sort of uh, cover the cost of these these uh, new bodies. Um, as we go forward, we're going to continue looking at you know surplus property sales, things of that sort, to, to fund it. We'll have that larger conversation um, come April. Um, but we do, we're having a conversation with the mayor's office as far as putting the unit and funding it for 13-14. For so those would be one-time revenues being used for ongoing expenses. I assume that the strategy would be that... We, we find it, more ongoing permanent funding sources, yes. Or, or, or that the positions themselves would not necessarily be ongoing beyond the disposition of those assets. If there is no uh, identified long-term funding to support the continued uh, unit, then what we'd have is basically a short-term unit. Okay. But I think, you know, as part of this, the larger conversation, there is um, a need to identify funding for economic development, and certainly this is a part of that. And so we're working to, to sort of put together a long-term strategy on funding. Maybe I'm not clearly understanding the, the exact function. So is, is this primarily an economic development function or is it more broadly uh, the management of the, the city's assets with the side benefit of putting them to use for economic development as well? It, it's, an, it's encompassing all aspects of the management of these assets, I, I trust. Yes, uh, is basically we're looking at certainly focusing on both city assets, but also other assets, assets out in the community. And that's more of the economic development piece, and that's where this comes into play. But certainly in looking at the city's own property and assets and things, there needs to be a focus on, on those. Okay. All right. Mr. Kretz. So it, it, at least short term, it seems like the, the intent is to at least create a strategic plan for these properties and then whether whether you would continue to manage them long term in this department or elsewhere it sounds like more of an open question but at least right now it seems like we don't have any strategic planning process for them so at least in I don't know how short term a time a year two years we'll get a, a handle on all these properties and and some sort of, sort of strategic direction for them and whether we continue to manage them through this process, place it elsewhere, um, take the strategic planning where we've done and, and not continue those positions. Uh, that seems like it's still an open question, correct? It is. Right now we have the, the results of the economic development report on whether it should be a nonprofit slash city department. 
will have information before the end of the calendar year. We're also doing a best practices asset management study. We have received four proposals. We're reviewing them right now, and um, we're going to be looking at a lot of options in terms of how this could fold in and how it would fit in with a nonprofit um, entity, what the city's long-term um, asset management and economic development models, and how they, they do converge. Do we have a list of projects, or do we anticipate having a list of projects beyond the couple most obvious, like the West LA Civic Center and uh, the LA City Mall? Um, beyond those most obvious, do we have a list of projects now, or do we have a timeline for when we'll have them? We have a, some projects that we listed in the department, I mean, I'm sorry, in the report. Um, the mangrove site where the regional connector is going, the old Lincoln Heights Jail, the West LA Civic Center, the LA Mall. Um, we also plan to, when the unit is formalized, um, meet with each of the council offices and get a list of priority projects that you've been waiting on. With GSC, I've been in the CAO's Municipal Facilities Group. There are some projects that um, I am familiar with. Um, but I'm sure that I don't know all of the projects that you've been waiting on. And so one of the first things that we're going to have to do is get a list, look at them, and provide some sort of first base evaluation because we, I don't know how many there are out there. What, what do you think the people. timeline is till we have the, the, the clearly much longer list? Um, within, within 60 days after the unit is established. Oh, that's not bad. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Chair, I enthusiastically support this. Thank you. And I, I don't want to be provincial about it, but the uh, West LA Civic Center has been something I've been dealing with for years now, wanting to move it in a way where we could have a good public-private partnership. Uh, and we're in the process of issuing an RFP. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of interest in it working with us and the potential housing we can create and other things. So for me, it's, it's, it's a blessing to see this moving forward, and I enthusiastic Mr. Chairman's support moving forward. Very good. Thank you. Um, any other questions, Mr. Kretz? No. Nope. Um, in support. All right. Very good. Well, then uh, it will be the unanimous action of this committee to uh, accept the recommendations and approve the report. Uh, that brings us to item number seven. Yes. We have uh, two cards so far on item number seven. So um, if you would like to speak on this matter, please bring a card forward. We are in number seven, right? Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right. Why don't, why don't I ask you to introduce that first, then we'll... And I'll, I'll just read off our items item to the CO uh, re and uh, planning reports relative to staffing and funding associated with the transition of the land use authority previously managed by the former CRA. All right, uh, so we have two cards. Uh, first speaker will be Cheryl Parisi, followed by Michael Davies. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Sorry for the long delay. Um, I, it, it, I mean, the, the, the previous conversation uh, on item number six and this one really um, bring to fore the issue that I'm here to talk about, which is really uh, the incredible asset that we have in terms of the CRA employees most of whom who've been let go um, and have been laid off. Um, and I really implore you, as we begin to pick up these pieces of redevelopment strategy, that you actually would direct the personnel department to come back to you with a report as to how we can best reach out, utilize, and ultimately employ um, the, the former employees of the Community Redevelopment Agency who have this knowledge and expertise um, and will hit the ground running. Um, I, I think it's just very, very important that as we move forward in terms of putting together the economic development piece, that we look toward a strategy to figure out how we can bring back and employ um, these amazing assets. And so I would ask that that happen, both in terms of the, the prior, the four positions that are being talked about in terms of the development of asset management, as well as the 11 positions that um, potentially, um, you know, will be created in the planning department um, pursuant to the land use issues. Um, you know, so again, I would just ask that you would direct the personnel department um, to come back and, and, and also to meet with AFSCME so that we can figure out a mutual strategy um, to figure out a way in which employment opportunities can be offered to these employees. 
Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, our next speaker is Michael Davies. Mr. Davies, welcome. Thank you. And in this particular matter, there are two points. One would be a refinement to what was just said. In terms of land use and knowledge of zoning and the general plan of the city and the and CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act, planning department staff are clearly the best suited to perform that work. Uh, if there are former redevelopment agency employees who qualify for the city planning associate exam and test, which is done open and promotional, then obviously there's no, uh, there could be no objection to that. But in terms of this particular function and land use, it's the current class titles, city planning associate, city planner, senior city planner, who are the best qualified to perform this work. The second piece, uh, which I brought up in Mr. Coret's committee, is simply studying a proposal to death, and this is the second committee this is going to. There's also a recommendation that whatever council does also be channeled into the managed hiring committee, which still seems to be, in terms of process, if there was any urgency to carrying out this function, and there appears to be, we seem to be forcing this through any number of valves, which one of which or two at most should have been sufficient to monitor the flow of money determine where the money is coming from, and uh, be able to appoint the appropriate staff. Planning department asked for 11 positions. The recommendation is for six. It's really bare bones. Uh, it's work that really needs to be initiated soon in terms of this transition, and uh, I would wish forthwith All right. this move ahead. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We can ask for the CAO's office to report on this matter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Madeline Rackley, and I'm here representing the CAO. Um, as you know, Assembly Bill 1X26 dissolved the city's uh, community redevelopment agency in February of this year. Consequently, uh, council uh, instructed the planning department to prepare an ordinance to transfer all the land use powers of the CRA to the city. The planning department did prepare a plan to absorb those responsibilities and um, council then requested the CAO to report on the fiscal impact of the proposed transfer of authority. The report before you then includes um, recommendations for staffing and funding for the planning department and the fiscal impact of adopting those recommendations. Um, as Mr. Davies uh, mentioned, the planning department initially requested 11 positions to support this work and if approved, the annual cost would be approximately $1.4 million annually. Uh, the planning department uh, then decided to um, hire the, the those the people in two phases. The first phase would include six positions, and uh, then later we would work with the planning department to work out the hiring of the additional five. The annual cost for the six requested positions would be almost $800,000 annually. Um, funding for these positions, uh, which is the primary interest, I think, of this committee, was not provided in the current budget. Um, in addition, the CRA tax increment has already been incorporated as general revenue in the budget. So given the city's limited resources, the CAO recommends uh, using the unappropriated balance layoff avoidance line item to pay for the six positions during the current fiscal year. Um, there are other potential sources of funds, which we discussed in the personnel committee, which includes AB 1290 funds. Um, in addition, the planning department is uh, willing to explore the possibility of new fees to uh, pay for these staff. Um, to, do, to determine whether or not the fees would be legal, they would need to do a, a study, a nexus study. Um, so the CAO does, in fact, support the transfer of the CRA land use functions to the pl planning department. And I am able to answer questions. and. So is Mr. Ken Bernstein, who is here from the planning department. All 
right. Thank you. Colleagues? Mr. Kretz. Yeah. Uh, I know as the, these redevelopment areas uh, expire, it's, it's not clear to me whether planning is going to be responsible for our new land use tools to spur redevelopment or if it's going to be a future nonprofit or CDD. Do we know how this all fits together? Sure. Hey, good afternoon, council members. Ken Bernstein with the Department of City Planning. We um, have put forward a proposal that is very specific to the land use uh, controls associated with these redevelopment plans. The, the basic issue is that while the redevelopment agencies, as we know it, have ceased to exist in California as of February 1st of this year, the 31 redevelopment plans in the city of Los Angeles that were administered by the CRALA live on, and many of them have um, expiration dates they're as much as 20 years out so each of those plans have a set of land use controls uh, and regulations that uh, uh, require findings of conformance with a redevelopment plan in North Hollywood for example that I know council member you and, and uh, the chair are familiar with that's an area where property owners and developers can only take full advantage of their uh, underlying development rights with approval from the redevelopment agency. And in North Hollywood, our only design review uh, is through the redevelopment plan. There's no underlying uh, zoning that uh, would require or other regulation that would require design review. So there are both uh, incentives, if you will, for applicants and developers as well as community protections that are only associated with those redevelopment plans. The proposal from the Department of City Planning does not indicate that, that planning will be undertaking all of the powers, uh, the economic development or financing issues that were previously addressed by the redevelopment agency. It's in those areas that you may wish to consider a new economic development entity, whether public-private or public-private partnership. This is really specific to land use uh, and uh, review of development projects. And. Uh, Another, another area. Um, another report mentions that uh, uh, mentions the records and that moving the records and integrating them into planning computer system obviously will be a, a major project. Where where are the records today? Are they secure? Do we have any any idea whether this is going to be a big problem to integrate them or not? Uh, this will be a big IT problem. There are a number of challenges, and actually one of the um, positions that is being requested is in our systems and GIS uh, division for just this, this reason. There are, there's a great deal of data management uh, and records uh, challenges that, that we're going to have to undertake. Uh, we have been meeting in a task force with the CRA's remaining staff for many months and have been addressing many of these transition issues, anticipating the, the potential transfer of this authority. And some of those issues have been related to records management and data, everything from uh, records on uh, individual projects to historic resource uh, survey data and much else. So th this will be something that the department would have to uh, um, you know, undertake over uh, uh, quite a period of time working with the remaining staff at the CRA. But we think it's doable, right? We, we don't do. see any impossible hurdles in um, this. Not yet. We don't, we obviously don't uh, have the authority at this point, so we don't know all the challenges that are yet before us. That is why as well I think there's wisdom in the CAO's recommendation to phase this in, to begin with six staff positions. Again, we had requested 11 originally. That would give us the opportunity as a department to begin work in this area once authority was transferred begin to wrap our arms around the issue uh, and some of, the, some of these very challenges and have a better sense of what the ultimate staffing levels would be. Yes, I, I, Mr. Chair, I, I think this is terrific. I, and with your last comment about phasing more afterwards, we're starting with the six. It's a very responsible <coughs> position. I appreciate the CAO doing this. Uh, let's face it, if you can take something through planning, you can end up creating a project that gives jobs to people and sets up a community in a positive way. As many of us were against the dismantling of the CRA, the reality on Exhibit A, where you just list all these projects, is significant enough for us to move forward with it. And I applaud the CAO and, and the Planning Department willing to work together on this. 
All right. Um, I, the, it's a small point, I guess, but um, permit fees in redevelopment areas would typically be waived um, under the new, if, if we were to assume the land use responsibilities as recommended, does that include with it any limitation on our ability to revisit that issue, uh, to come up with a new permit fee schedule perhaps, um, uh, or, or are we, do, or do we adopt the current, the existing redevelopment policy of waiving the fees? Yeah, the existing policy, the CRA uh, LA has never charged permit fees. Uh, the reason for that is that these were viewed as economic incentive areas and trying to incentivize development and revitalization. The CAO recommendation is that our department initiate a fee study to uh, establish the uh, potential nexus uh, to uh, th that legal groundwork that, that would be necessary to allow for the imposition of a fee. It would then be a policy decision by the council as to whether to ultimately impose a fee that might be justified by the fee study or to continue to subsidize that work uh, from the general fund or another source. Okay. Anything further, colleagues? All right. Um, then it looks like it would be the unanimous. Yes. Uh, action of the committee to approve the recommendations. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. Okay, that takes us. All right, that brings us to right. item number eight. eight. Item eight is a city controller report relative to staffing associated with the expansion of the city's accounting assistance resource program. We have Shane Min from the controller's office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, honorable council members. Shane Min from the controller's office. Uh, we're here to ask for an extension of, a, uh, of the accounting assistance program. Uh, back in 2010, city council approved a program by which uh, we could bring back city retirees on an expedited uh, schedule to come back and work for the, uh, for the city to assist uh, city departments in their accounting functions. Um, how it works is uh, the charter section 1164 allows for retirees to come back to work for the city as long as they are approved by the mayor's office. We have a list of uh, classifications and employees and accounting uh, classifications. We submit it annually to the mayor's office and they approve it early on and uh, they allow us to bring them back as needed when, if and when the city departments ask for assistance. Uh, we have uh, funding to the tune of $250,000 uh, in our budget for this program, uh, but the departments do uh, reimburse us, so we've been rolling over the funds year after year. Um, at this current time, we have about uh, nine departments that are using people, uh, retirees, uh, to assist them in their accounting functions. About uh, 12 retirees are back at work uh, using this uh, program. Uh, what, what's happening now is that uh, what we found is um, the program works very well, except that we are running into the problem that we don't have enough people who can do the work, because the work is normally in the uh, entry level and data entry areas, accounting clerks, accountants, that's what's needed, and we're running short of uh, qualified people to do that, uh, that kind of work. So we're proposing that we bring in uh, interns from local colleges and uh, universities to assist in this program. Uh, we are asking that, uh, that uh, certain classifications be added to the controller's position, uh, um, as needed positions, uh, such as administrative intern one and two, administ administrative trainee, uh, student professional worker, and student worker. Uh, Adding all these uh, classifications would give us flexibility in terms of uh, figuring out what to, uh, how much to pay uh, interns, uh, depending on the work and the uh, and the experience or uh, the education level of these interns. Okay. Um. These are entry level positions uh, for the most part, entry level work for the most part, so I assume it doesn't take um, a lot of supervision on the part of our ordinary uh, full time financial personnel. But I'm wondering if that has been, if there's been a cost benefit analysis 
uh, of uh, of that factor. The fact that existing people have to provide additional supervision of the temporary folks has that been considered as an offsetting? Uh, there will need to be some training because obviously these people will not have any kind of city knowledge or right. city system knowledge. But we're 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 thinking that you know these are you know generally entry level uh, work which will require short amount of training, and uh, they can uh, start working on this to assist other city employees in doing their work. So it'll be you know more more of an assistance rather than independent work. So they would work alongside city employees. You know, uh, they would need to be shown how to use the system. They would need to be shown what, how, how to do, what to do, and right. and, and presumably, if, you know, uh, they, we will be hiring smart young people, so they'll pick it up pretty quickly. Yeah, it's an intriguing concept. I, I love the idea. I'm just wondering if there's been any co kind of cost-benefit comparison of, of that, uh, because we're getting extra hours. We're getting more work at a reduced cost, but there's also the uh, one-time training costs and then there's ongoing supervision costs by permanent personnel who have to, uh, I mean, I, I assume there's sufficient oversight that we don't have anything to be concerned about with part-time accounting interns coming up and handling the accounting functions with the people's money. There has to be some supervision structure in, in place and that has a cost. I don't know if it's a significant cost, but it has some cost of people having to divert from their own responsibilities to oversee this this function. Uh, I understand. Uh, we haven't looked at uh, it in uh, in that kind of detail as yet. Um, okay. We've, uh, you know, uh, you're That's correct fine. in uh, saying that there will be some amount of cost by, uh, you know, to provide that training and, uh, and 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 some amount of supervision. But most of the uh, city's accounting processes at that level work on 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 a, on a on a data entry and then an approval level so okay. there is always a secondary approval process that that uh, that all financial documents or or uh, accounting processes would have to go through okay so if i may just add i think one of the the ideas here is to basically look at college students who are in the, the accounting profession bring them on part time and with the hope that at some day when we have to actually give the test for some entry level accounting um, classification that these folks would roll right back in. You have a bench. You have a bench. You have a bench. Yeah. You got so, it. And it's, it's a good concept. Um, adding positions uh, to the controller's position authority is uh, somewhat inconsistent with everything else that we've been doing in, in every other area. Uh, does the CAO have any uh, view about, about the request to uh, add as needed positions? We don't have the problem um, actually adding these. It, it, essentially, the DPOs have not come before council yet for approval. And this is, if you uh, approve this, I know basically we can add them to the DPOs as part of their as-needed authority okay. list. It's, it's not problematic. Okay. Well, for the record, uh, Mr. Kretz did have to get to another meeting, so we uh, have lost a quorum, so we're not going to be able to take an action uh, on this item. But... Um, uh, Appreciate the report, and we'll have we'll go ahead and uh, move it forward without recommendation. Move it forward without recommendation. Thank you. And if I might add, Mr. Chair, sure. I just want to, the public to know who might be watching this. Basically, the controller is requesting to expand this program to allow them to hire accounting trainees and interns from a pool of college students trained in accounting and finance. And then the conclusion is the controller is requesting the authority to hire accounting interns as required by this program. The hourly wages for these positions range from 1274 to 20 point 23, and the interns will be limited to 1,040 hours per fiscal year. Funding for these positions hired will be paid by the departments requesting the assistance. I Thank like that. Thank you very much, Council Member. All right, well, why don't we go ahead, um, and because we don't have a quorum, we just have to do this with the chair's recommendation, but um, we'll, we'll advance it uh, with the chair's recommendation of approval then. And, thank you very much, uh, Councilmember. Sounds like with Mr. Rosendahl's concurrence. Great. So, thank you. Okay, that brings that us, us to item number, number nine. nine. It's a CEO report relative to the grant acceptance package for the County of Los Angeles 
uh, I'm sorry, the, the, yeah, the County of Los Angeles Department of Community and Senior Citizen Services for the 2012-13 Dispute Resolution Program Grant. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Mara Carolla with the Office of the CAO. The City Attorney's Office requests authority to accept $390,930 in grant funding as reimbursement from the County of Los Angeles for the Dispute Resolution Program. Um, the grant funding will provide reimbursement for four positions in the City Attorney's Office. The match requirement for the grant is also 390930 The city will meet its match through salaries, related costs, and earned credit for volunteer hours. No additional appropriation is needed for the salaries since that's already included in the city attorney's budget. Um, and the city attorney's office is also here if you have any specific questions. So we get $390,000 in grant funding, and our match is done through things that we already have in our budget and the work of our existing employees. Exactly. And it's for a terrific program. The dispute resolution program is really, really important uh, in communities uh, throughout the city. So, um, Mr. Rosendahl, and let's check the questions. I think it's great. You know, uh, the county, I thank the county for coming up with it. It's very valuable in a lot of different issues we do, so obviously I support this going particularly when we see, you know, the strain that our own city attorney's office is under, the overburden that our courts now have, and it's going to get significantly worse with the cuts that are coming from the state budget. Um, neighborhood dispute resolution programs are even a higher priority. So uh, very important uh, measure to move forward, which we will advance to council with the chair's recommendation and Mr. Rosendahl's concurrence. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. And that That's brings it. us to the conclusion of our agenda items, and we are adjourned. Thank you all very much.